All we need to know, guys, here was causing a little bit of there and then there. And all we need is more down the line so you feel like you can just get a little bit more on top of it through the golf ball, okay? And you're a couple degrees under the plane, needing to be a little bit more on top of it, okay? Yeah. Now, where, where would that come from? Well, that's where I would question the takeaway. Think about it, guys. Ready? I do give you guys that love zone. Here's the love zone, ready? Takeaway. Down the line of the feet when it's parallel to the ground. Ideal, right? Because watch, if I just turn, no manipulation, boom, down the line dead square, right? I almost can feel like I can get on top of it even from that position. If you put me right here, I'd kind of be outside the ball, wouldn't I? Mm -hmm. So what would I have to do? A little bit of manipulation. A little bit of manipulation. So what I would tell you was, why don't we get the alignment rod at your feet? Why don't we get the left shoulder, hand and club, pointing down that line a little bit more right here? And then you probably will be able to feel from here like you can stay on top of it more, as opposed to feeling like you have to drop it under. So when the club does set vertical, some players like Brian Stark, you know, they, it, it just, he needs it here because then he just, it, it helps him stay on top of it. And even though it shallows, it helps him stay on top of it. Other players get it a little bit up and out and they react to that and try to drop it under. Okay, so I would like to see you work it more down the line and then try to feel like you can have a little bit more of a direct angle of attack through impact. Same knockdown feeling through impact. Let's just, hey, fix the takeaway and make it perfect. And then, there you go. Why don't we do a couple little stop goes from there, you know what I mean? Right. Where you stop it there, turn and hit it. You can go right to the top and then just go full speed from there. So watch, he's gonna work it right down the line of his feet. He already knows, I don't need to go put him in position. He knows where it is, there it is. Turn. And it's rotate, yeah. It's a lot of our checkpoints, okay? Keeps the club in front of his hands and the takeaway. Now we always, always prefer our players to have the club just in front of their hands here or down the line of their hands, never inside. Because look at where the club sets. Up the forearm, inside of it, with the butt of the club pointed more down. Now look, he does a great job turning that club up in there to the top. The hands are matching the shoulder plane. Watch this club shallow. Boom. And he just moves right through it. And the club drops a little like that. Mm -hmm. I have to imagine that that had the chance of getting underneath the plane a little bit when you hit that full shot. Does that yeah. make sense? Because yeah. the full shot would then, if anything, maybe disconnect the arms a little more uh -huh. and they would fall behind you a little bit. Yeah. And when that club gets too underneath, where is it gonna, it's gonna lead to real high ball flight. Exactly. So that's good that you're actually working on that because if that, that was just a hair under uh -huh. and your knockdown mentality and getting off your right side is keeping the club working down more on top of it. Rather than think like you need to go over, just hit a cut. Hit a cut. Hit a cut. So you're gonna take the club straight back but you're gonna feel like you hit a cut just underneath but that's perfect there. Oh, I'm just gonna turn right up. Yeah, see so just hitting a cut will take away, it'll neutralize, it'll take away the left movement. But Ooh, that was money right there, huh? That was good. All right, let's see what we got. Just film this one. Watch this, one swing later. A little more down the line, not as far outside, up the plane. And a more, oh, less drop, do you see that? More direct angle of attack, down the forearm now. And watch the club face, guys. Look how much more stable it is through there, right? Night and day. Night and day. Hey, hey, real quick, tell our viewer, what is the fade feeling to you, like, feel like, what does it feel like you do? Whenever I'm trying to fade it, I'm trying to keep the lower body almost quieter. So it lets my arms and everything come out in front almost and come what? across the ball rather than come more inside. What are you saying? When the lower body gets active for him, he gets out in yeah. front and he drops the club further behind. That's a tendency that he has, right? Exactly. So what he's saying is he's feeling like this stays more in cement and his upper body moves his hands and club more out in front of him. I always say the best golf swings, in my opinion, have a draw transition mm -hmm. with a fade impact. Does that make sense? A yeah. fade move through impact. And all I mean is about that is when I think fade, I work harder to the left. You know, I, I work this way, but I don't want to do that from a steep position. No. I want to be on plane, transitioning what they call shallower or just on plane, and then hard fade at the bottom. All the hard fade at the bottom does, it just keeps the club crawling right down that forearm and have a direct path to the golf ball and really squares up the face. So it's kind of, you know, it would be like this, right, where you go 
up to the top, draw transition, fade through the ball, right? And all that is is me working, you know, around my left side really strong. And you can see how that ball went just dead straight right there, shallow. But then I was able to rotate as hard as I want to the left. I felt zero, zero rotation of the club face. Right. I like straight back, down the line of the feet, feel the fade. And for our better players out there, for the dads or moms of juniors who are looking at the, you know, their kids, a lot of youngsters get real underneath and flippy. You know, just painting the picture of their mind. If, if they're hitting that little loopy draw, well, explain what a pull fade means, you know, to be a little more on top of it and control the face a little bit more. We talked about Brooks Koepka at the PGA this week. Notice how he was talk they were talking about he was trying to hit down to the left more on his golf ball. Well, all down to the left is going to do is going to start that ball a little bit more on a fade. Now, Brooks is doing that feeling from a connected position at the top to where he's not in a position to where it's going to promote him coming dead over the top. So for you, it's important to understand you're in a position straight back and on plane to where really you can fire as hard as you want around your left side. And I think the fe feeling of a fade, you know, for, for, for you is everything stays on top of it more. Upper body takes over a little bit. I love that. Doesn't get this way. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's, when I think fade, I just think I'm just going to go a little harder around my left side. And that always keeps the club a little bit more in front of me. And what's funny is if you guys like if you guys watch this ball flight, it's not like I know the wind's a little bit out of the right, but it's not like Will's actually hitting a fade every time. These balls are just a little one yard draw to the left. It's just done with connection and not a manipulative move with the hands a little bit. Ooh, that was good. I watched one of your YouTube videos about Cam trying to hit like flighted shots and how you'd have them hit 30 minutes of flighted shots and then come back. So I've really just been working on trying to compress the ball, um, that flighted ball flight. Um, Cause when I, when I tend to, when I try to compress it more, I, I get off my right side. Show us what you mean. So my tendency is I'll stay back on the right side and then kind of mm -hmm. stay back here. But when I really focus on compressing it and trying to hit it, low mm. I uh the ball flash is so much better so much more mm. consistent hey, well, I've had Cam do this why don't you walk us through what you're feeling in that knockdown shot uh so on the knockdown shot I'm really focusing on just staying connected keeping the arms in front of me um and then just turning and not so much super far back but Almost three quarter, almost. Keep hitting, Will, but I'm going to talk a little bit for here. Right. I love, I love what he just said. He's here. It was his rendition of what Cameron said. He said, "I'm just trying to turn to keep the arms in front of me." You know, rem remember Cameron phrased it like, "I'm trying to take a full body turn and have my arms swing really short." Yeah. That's the same thing that Will just meant, and I love uh, the consistency at which our guys think. They understand that any extra runoff of the arms and hands at the top is going to relay into looseness at the bottom. Loose at the top, loose at the bottom, right? That tight feeling at the top is going to keep it tight on the way through. Jeez. <laughs> it, I have to say, though, dude, this is, like, this is like the fourth lesson in a row where you hit the first three shots, and I look at Dad, and we both just start laughing because I'm like, I mean, okay, so keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> at Porzak Golf, we take a lot of pride in having developed some of the best and most consistent golf swings on the planet. We do this through simplicity. Our Full Swing Masterclass will take you on a step-by-step, -step, easy to understand process on how to get your golf swing better than ever. Join the many before you who've utilized our Full Swing Masterclass to take their games to the next level and beyond.